Now, people want movie franchises to change things up as they go along. Nobody wants the same boring old thing every time. But it's also fair to say that sometimes filmmakers get a little over-eager and ahead of themselves. The result is often a shocking ending that doesn't just harm the movie itself, but potentially condemns the entire franchise to the cinematic abyss. Creative gambles can, of course, sometimes pay off. Infinity War ended things with an insane curveball that Endgame had to invent time travel just to get around, and the MCU seems to have basically gotten away with it. Sadly, that isn't very common, and here's some examples to prove it. Disclaimer, by the way, for an opinions-based list. If you do disagree, that's cool. Films are a personal thing, and it'd probably be quite weird if you agreed with everything this list has to say. So, with that vain attempt to stem the tide of inevitable death threats out of the way, I'm Will for What Culture, and here are 10 movie endings that basically doomed their franchise. Number 10, Superman dies, but nobody cares. Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. During the hero's final battle against Doomsday, Superman is mortally wounded and dies, after which a funeral is held for the fallen hero, before the film's final shot hints at his impending resurrection. To be fair, the DC Extended Universe was very nearly derailed right out of the gate by the wildly divisive Man of Steel, which was widely criticized for its huge amounts of collateral damage and the decision to have soup snap General Zod's neck. Batman v Superman was intended to be a corrective, and the marketing seemed to suggest that Snyder might actually pull it off. But then the movie came out, and Snyder made the ill-advised decision to kill off the Man of Steel way too early in the franchise, only to suggest his return literally minutes later. The problem is that Man of Steel and Batman v Superman both reinterpreted the iconic superhero as a dour, charmless dope, such that nobody really cared when he died. This had the unfortunate knock-on effect of rendering his revival in Justice League completely flat and underwhelming, unaided by Henry Cavill's infamous moustache debacle and heaps of obvious reshoots. Justice League then unfortunately grossly underperformed at the box office amid the blatant lack of fan interest, and though the DCEU is technically still alive, it's clearly moving away from the ensemble model and banking instead on the standalone hits such as Wonder Woman, Aquaman and Shazam, which are actually really good. Number 9. The Architect Bores Everybody – The Matrix Reloaded Neo meets up with the creator of The Matrix, The Architect, an exposition spouting Colonel Sanders knockoff who presents Neo with a choice. He can return to the source and rebuild The Matrix, or try in vain to rescue Trinity from certain death and cause a system crash, likely killing everyone connected to The Matrix. Neo, believing he can defy The Architect, save Trinity, and discovers he can now manifest some of his powers in the real world before before passing out. And the film's tantalizing cliffhanger is that Agent Smith has found a way into the real world by possessing a Resistance member, Bane. The hype surrounding the release of Matrix Reloaded was indescribable, and though the film certainly delivered its fair share of epic action, it culminated in a fashion so woefully unsatisfying that the third and final film grossed barely half of what Reloaded did. The architect's pseudo-intellectual exposition dump made it abundantly clear that the Wachowskis were neither interested enough nor able to deliver a truly compelling or concise continuation of the classic original movie. Julie, the third film followed in the same overwritten stead, all the way to an even more unsatisfying and equally incomplete ending, while not really doing much interesting with Neo's new real-world abilities. Number 8. No Fate But What We Make Or is there? Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines John Connor and Kate Brewster reach what they believe to be Skynet's core at the end of Terminator 3, only to discover that it's actually a fallout shelter. Skynet has now spread through the internet and effectively become unstoppable, launching the nuclear holocaust known as Judgment Day, killing billions while Connor and Brewster are left to accept their helpless survival and plan the first steps of human resistance. Removed from the wider context of the Terminator franchise, this is actually a pretty ballsy and impressive ending for a $200 million blockbuster, but it sadly also undermines the entire message of Terminator 2. T2 of course ended with Sarah Connor looking to the future with hope, 
for the first time, content that there's no fate but what we make. Now, you can argue that this maxim actually applies to Skynet as much as it does to humanity, but it does feel like a rather awkward thematic backpedal, and one that the rest of the series has further struggled with. The increasingly desperate glut of sequels have gone back and forth on the inevitability of Judgment Day, and tied the increasingly convoluted timeline in so many knots where even the most dedicated fans have stopped caring. Number 7. Laurie Kills Michael Halloween H2O 20 years later. Laurie Stroh's intense final showdown with Michael Myers concludes with her unambiguously cutting his head off with an axe. Franchise over with the H2O. Right? Jamie Lee Curtis returning to the series for one final movie where she definitively puts Michael Myers away is a great idea in theory, but of course Hollywood loves money, and it's incredibly rare for studios to display actual artistic integrity and know when to say enough is enough, especially in the horror genre. Four years later, Halloween Resurrection was released, which retconned Myers' death in the most hilariously stupid and insulting way possible. By revealing that Myers swapped his costume with a medic, whose larynx he crushed prevented him from telling Laurie that she was about to decapitate him. And to make matters worse, the movie began with Laurie being killed off after grabbing the idiot ball and refusing to kill Michael when she had the chance. Still, if it hadn't happened, we might not have got the 2018 Halloween, which was pretty good, so swings and roundabouts. Number 6. Clones, Clones, Clones Everywhere Resident Evil Extinction after revealing the existence of the clones of Alice at the start of Resident Evil Extinction, the ending teases that Alice is planning to take the fight to Albert Wesker with a massive army of her clones. Now, to be totally fair to the Resident Evil franchise, these films have always been spectacularly stupid, so throwing clones into the mix isn't an inherently terrible idea, but the way in which Paul W.S. Anderson integrates them into the series certainly is. First and foremost, the next movie, Afterlife, kills off all of the clones in its opening action sequence, destroying all the trashy promise of sitting through dozens of clones fighting zombies. Nevertheless, the whole clone plot lingers around awkwardly for the rest of the series, leading to the head-smackingly awful revelation in Resident Evil The Final Chapter that the real Alice was just in fact another clone herself. It's a twist on the level of it was all a dream, and it all started with Extinction's ending. Number 5. Fixing the Timeline – X-Men Days of Future Past X-Men Days of Future Past is a good film, and it concludes with Charles Xavier convincing Mystique to spare the life of an anti-mutant politician, ensuring that the Sentinels are never created and the original apocalyptic timeline in 2023, where most of the X-Men are killed, never comes to pass. Wolverine then wakes up back in 2023 at the X-Mansion, where all the mutants' lives have been saved. Like I said, Days of Future Past is a really good film, but as an entry in the series and especially its ending, it introduces several nagging problems. First of all, the film's general time-hopping shenanigans snapped the series' already loose grasp on continuity in half, with both X-Men Apocalypse and X-Men Dark Phoenix leaping forward about a decade into the future, each, despite the cast members clearly not aging to reflect that time jump. Days of Future Past also created the fixed endpoint of 2023 where the timeline was repaired, an ending which the subsequent sequels didn't seem remotely interested in working towards, especially Dark Phoenix. This is exemplified by no subsequent mainline X-Men movie turning out much good, and the only quality offerings being spin-offs such as Deadpool and Logan. You can certainly appreciate why Brian Singer and Simon Kinberg wanted to make the movie, but the irony of fixing the continuity is that it also created major problems for the rest of the series' tenure. Number 4. Shaw is dead, and David created the Xenomorphs, Alien Covenant. Alien Covenant's third act reveals that the malevolent android David was the creator of the Xenomorphs. Covenant's final scene then goes full moustache twirler on fans by having David reveal that he's taken the place of his good counterpart, Walter, and effectively condemned survivors Daniels and Tallahassee to a likely grim fate. So how did it doom the franchise? Well, first and foremost, Covenant took too many steps towards completely demystifying the Xenomorphs. For while it's theoretically possible that David isn't the only person to create a race of xenomorph-like creatures, the reveal nevertheless completely stripped away the haunting cosmic horror of their initially unknown origins. 
That's to say nothing of Prometheus building up Shaw as a likeable protagonist only for Covenant to completely betray this for reasons unknown, before David, with all his godlike pretensions, is finally confirmed to be the series' ultimate antagonist. Now, we currently have little idea of how the recently announced follow-up will turn out, but it's safe to say that Ridley Scott has contorted the property in so many awkward directions that it's impossible to imagine any of this being resolved or expanded upon in a satisfying fashion. Number 3. There's another Jigsaw Apprentice. Jigsaw. Towards the end of Jigsaw, despite appearing to die moments earlier, Logan rises up to reveal he's still alive and that, by way of a convoluted flashback, he has been John Kramer, aka Jigsaw's extra secret apprentice, all along. Furthermore, the barn game throughout the film actually took place a decade prior to the present day, with Logan himself being a participant before ending up recruited by Jigsaw. And killing Detective Halloran at the end of the film is revenge for Halloran letting a criminal walk through who went on to kill Logan's wife. Granted, the Saw franchise is no stranger to pulling random plot twists totally out of nowhere, but some eight movies into the franchise, this gotcha ending really wasn't good enough. After Saw 2, Saw 4, and Saw 3D all introduced new surprise assistants to Jigsaw, doing it again here, and having had Logan wait in the wings for an entire decade before doing anything, just seemed impossibly convoluted, even for the low standards of the series. It was ultimately a twist received with such utter indifference by the fanbase that despite Jigsaw's big box office success, the upcoming ninth film is going the reboot route and forgetting it entirely. Number 2. Johnny Depp is Grindelwald, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them it's revealed that the villainous Percival Graves was in fact the evil dark wizard Gellert Grindelwald all along at the end of Fantastic Beasts, and you know what? Surprise, surprise, he's played by Johnny Depp. Warner Brothers clearly expected the introduction of Depp as the Thanos of Fantastic Beasts franchise to be a hugely shocking rug pull that dropped Jaws the world over. Aside from the fact that this was leaked weeks before the film came out, Depp's popularity started to take a massive nosedive around the time the first Fantastic Beasts film hit cinemas. His appearance, replacing the far more imposing Colin Farrell and kitted out in a ridiculous white-haired get-up, was met with both groans and laughs from many fans, frustrated that they'd have to deal with Depp's mugging for four planned sequels. As expected, the first sequel, The Crimes of Grindelwald, was an abject mess, though Depp's fairly ho-hum performance was ultimately just one of its many creative issues. With three movies left to go and Warner Brothers reportedly frustrated that J.K. Rowling came out to defend Depp's casting in light of more recent legal and PR issues, there's clearly a sentiment among fans and the studio that Depp's casting was a massive mistake. Number 1. Introducing Time Travel, Paranormal Activity, The Marked Ones The fifth film in the Paranormal Activity franchise served as a spin-off to the main story, but dropped a game-changing final twist by introducing time travel into the franchise. At the end of the movie, which takes place in 2012, poor Hector gets forced through a strange door which transports him back to 2006, where he finds himself caught in the middle of the first movie's ending as a possessed Katie kills her boyfriend and Hector is presumably killed off screen. Now, the introduction of time travel has signaled the death knell for countless movies and TV series, and although this twist did at least find a vaguely creative way to tether the marked ones to the main franchise, it ultimately completely derailed the series' already loose sense of internal logic and continuity. Time travel is one of those things that can't really be put back in the box once it's been conjured, and the final movie in the series to date, The Ghost Dimension, ultimately failed to do much to capture capitalize on the big reveal. Basically, unless you're the Russo brothers, leave time travel the hell alone. And there you have it folks, 10 movie endings that basically dooms their entire franchise. Feel free to drop this video a like if you enjoyed it, and hit up whatculture.com for daily news, lists, and articles. I'm Will for What Culture, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you next time.